Right. Okay. <clears throat> so we continue the way we were. However, there'll be a short little, uh, a little extra thing that we will do in this, uh, you know, semester is that uh, for your own personal growth, uh, we will request that after every proverb that I will teach. So maybe like, you know, today we will cover probably half of Proverbs 23. But once we do that, uh, and we complete the whole proverb, then as an assignment for your own self, what I would request is that you sit down and uh, you learn and you, you know, you can understand what God is saying to you. And maybe you can write down in a few words, a page or something that the Lord would minister to you, you know, personally. Now, at that point, you are free to submit it as an assignment or if you do not want to, but you want to do it as a personal thing, I leave that to you. But only request is just, you know, I would suggest it that you would do it. Okay, that will be a great, great impact in learning. Okay, so uh, then as we go into the book of Song of Solomon and the book of Ecclesiastes, it will be a little more faster. Song of Solomon will be much in depth, in detail. I am not going to teach it as a survey. I'm going to teach it as chapter wise, verse by verse. So we know, you know, that this is in, in context when it is written, it's a love song, but it's also Christ speaking to the church, to his bride. And we will go into practical details about what God is saying. It's an amazing book to learn and understand. You know, we don't read it so often. And Ecclesiastes, we know for its word vanity, <laughs> but there are deep truths in it too. And we'll cover that also. Okay. So, right, let's go. <clears throat> Proverbs chapter 23, first three verses. When you sit down to dine with a ruler, consider carefully what is before you. Put a knife to your throat if you're a man of great appetite. Do not desire his delicacies, for it is deceptive food. Uh, what is Solomon trying to say? The, the root of this first three verses is that uh, God does not just tell you what how to believe, in whom to believe, but he also tells you how to behave, how to live. It's a character issue. And here Solomon begins to write this, that there is... God is interested in the details of life. And one of those details is what, what is mentioned in the first three verses here. Suppose you're invited to have a meal with a ruler, someone who's a king. This is the warning. Be careful how you go. You know, Be careful what is said before you. Why? Because temptation is tough. What is said before you it can also become a means for temptation. A luxury... Uh, you know, things that are kept before you, tempting you, enticing you, it can happen. And this comes basically from uh, the first step that heads towards sin is called the lust of the flesh. First John chapter 2 verse 16 and Genesis chapter 3 verse 6 talks about it. The lust of the flesh. Eve looked at the fruit, you know, and desired it. First John chapter 2 verse 6, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. This is the whole root of sin. That these are the three areas. When the devil tempted Jesus, what was the three areas? Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life. You know, cast yourself down. Look at the kingdoms. You know, all those things. Turn the stones into bread. What was he doing? Lust of the flesh. Satisfy your lust. Satisfy your flesh. And we know that man is made uh, body, soul, spirit. But that's the reverse order. Many times we say body, soul, spirit. Actually, man is first made spirit, soul, and body. When you see creation, we are spirit. God put his breath into us. The spirit, satisfying the spirit, growing in the spirit is the most important thing. Satisfying the soul and then satisfying the body. The body is not made to become our master. We are made to become the master of the body. And that's the whole idea. <clears throat> that when we live life, uh, there are things that are desirable to the flesh, but there is a temptation behind it, which can draw us away. And when Solomon is writing this, the idea behind this is, what is your behavior like? Is there control? Or by certain things, you know, you lose control. Uh, what is the impression that your life's made? You know? It should not be in such a way that ungodly people, you know, find a way to criticize you. They should not be able to come in and say, oh, look, at this is a believer, but they have no control. 
that they give in and this is how they live. This is, this is a way where we are not glorifying God. There is a way where we are not, in a sense, uh, not reflecting the nature of God. And he says, when you are sitting before a ruler, you know, think about it. What impression is your behavior going to make? Think about it. <clears throat> if you are going to be out of control, you know, and, and the key reason is this, know your weaknesses and be on guard. Know your weaknesses and be on guard. Do not let your weakness become a stumbling block. First Corinthians chapter 8 verse 9 and Romans chapter 14 verse 21. Know the weakness and don't let the weakness becoming a stumbling block. Guard and grow in that area. Because, um, you know, uh, in, in Psalms chapter 19 verse 13, it says this, you know, keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Presumptuous sins means basically areas where you may be a little bit arrogant or proud that say, we will not, I will not fall in this area. I am good. I am strong. I know to handle myself in this area. That's the area of danger. It's presumptuous sins. What was David's strong point? His integrity. Which area did he fall in? In his integrity. What was Abraham's strength? Faith. Which area did he fall in? Faith. What was the strength of Moses, his humility. Which area did he fall in? In his humility, he got angry and hit the rock. So, presumptuous sin. Never think that, you know, I, I am good in this area. I am on guard in an area. And when it comes to weaknesses or areas that I can be tempted in easily or areas that, you know, I get tempted in or any individual gets tempted in, they should be on guard. Flee at the sign of it. Run away from it at the sign of it. You know, what I'm trying to say is not, I'm, it does not mean physical runaway, but if it is physical, then run away physically. Be away from it. But in, in the heart, if there is something that is going to tempt me in that sense to, you know, draw me in so that I fall and become a stumbling block, then I'm prepared in my heart. You know, I'm prepared in my heart to, to keep myself, you know, to keep myself. Because temptation sometimes, let's be honest, can sometimes be hard to resist. We can fail in those times, you know. We can sometimes happen those things. Second Peter chapter one verse five and six talks about to your knowledge add self control. When I'm spirit filled, when a believer is spirit filled, one of the fruit of the spirit is self control. You know, the Holy Spirit will help in these areas to help us, you know. And do not desire His delicacy, for it is deceptive. We see that in the book of Daniel chapter one. That the best of food is placed out. But Daniel and his friends purpose in their heart. Because they know it is deception. It was not just the food. First, their food would be changed. Then the culture would be changed. Then their names would be changed. That's exactly what was happening. First, they changed their names. They brought them to a place. Then they changed their name. They gave them a new identity. And they gave them a new food. And they said, we, are not, we don't want it. We want to stay away from it. We don't want to be identified with those things. And what was the result in Daniel chapter 1 verse 10? They were found to be more wise, 10 times more wise than the others. There was a glow on the face. That's the glory of God. That's the anointing of God. Because then, when that's where obedience comes in. So, <clears throat> this, is, this is, like I think about it, you know. When Proverbs 23 is talking, it's the, the theme of Proverbs 23 is life and conduct. How do you conduct your life? And imagine, you know, that in the initial part of his life, Solomon would write these things, but he fell prey to the same things. A wife would come in and she would bring her culture. She would bring her deity. And he could not say no to her. And then he helped each wife to build their own shrine in that sense. They build altars and he would help them worship them. <laughs> he fell. You know, he fell because many marrying many princesses so that he's not going to war. So there is a war that is not happening on the outside, but there is a war that is happening on the inside, which is spiritual warfare. So Solomon does not have to fight like his father fought many wars. But then Solomon has to fight a spiritual warfare where he fails. 
and it's not generally the outside it is the motive behind those things that is the real problem and we'll come to that in the next following verses which come to verse 6 and 7 we'll talk about it it's not what is placed before us it is the motive by which what is placed before us and temptation has that has that uh, you know inbuilt in it that there is someone on the behind that is trying to entice the believer or the, or the person with the purpose to make sure that they fall and they do not walk with god so tough saying in that sense why would god has to include something about the appetite and sitting before kings and eating in the bible well he is not just concerned about what we believe he is also concerned about how we live the christian life how we live the daily needs how we meet our daily needs how do we live uh, our daily lives details of it god's interest in it and that's what he wants us to live like that was 4 and 5 do not weary yourself to gain wealth cease from your consideration of it when you set your eyes on it it is gone for wealth certainly makes itself wings like an eagle that flies towards the heavens now <clears throat> do not make yourself weary this is a warning against covetousness you know like this this is a disease in the world today they bought a new phone i must buy a better phone they have this car i must get a better car they have a new 2 bh i must get a 3 bh covetousness you know desiring what the other person has and i have less but i want theirs i want what is belongs to them i want this this is a disease covetousness is a dangerous disease wanting what belongs so not satisfied with what god has given now in verse 4 and 5 when he says do not weary yourself to gain wealth cease from your concern it does not mean that we should not work hard <laughs> let me be very let me be very clear what this verse really means it does not mean don't work hard uh, you know don't don't you know uh, you know like strive toil and work hard to support the family to make an investment to save money it's not talking about those things it is not talking about those things it is talking about trying to become rich in an earthly way desiring what belongs to someone else that i want more and i want more you see covetousness is never satisfied the covetousness always wants more i want more i want more you know and the warning in verse 5 is very clear when you set your eyes on it it is gone and the, the what is what is real what is the real issue behind this is that a person who is fully given himself or herself for a cause all that i want to do is make money so all my energy all my talent all my i'm waking up early i'm sleeping with one focus that like god is not in the picture but my one focus is making money now if someone works hard makes money and honors god glory to god you know if god opens those doors and god is helping and blessing the person to receive it he receive it if god blesses receive it you know and if but if it is not god if someone gets rich works hard gets rich because the blessing of god good learn to give to god and glorify the kingdom of good this is god's way he wants to bless he will bless you know did god bless people in the old and new testament of course he did some people are called that way some people are called to be business people and their their work is that they work hard they make god blesses them and then they further the kingdom of god by whatever god blesses them glory to god but the contrast here is a person who is only occupied with wealth and the warning is be careful it can be gone like this it can be gone in any way you know it can go it can crash we have seen in history we are hearing how companies and how these mammoth huge organizations which no one thought uh, will ever you know fall but they are gone in a moment they are gone it's finished why sometimes it's judgment of god sometimes it's a judgment of god we see that in genesis 13 and genesis 14 it can go just like that you know sometimes it is because of the person's laziness this is proverbs chapter 6 verse 9 
it can happen sometimes it is uh, like casual uh, you know laziness uh, you know like the prodigal son in luke chapter 15 in verses 12 to 16 extravagant life i want my share and then he just blew it up and where did he end up you know eating the food of the pigs how did that happen how fast did it go it just went because the eye the, what was his eyes on my father's wealth and my income you know give me my money and i want to go my way and then it was gone you know it was gone sometimes people will lose it because of injustice happens sometimes it just goes because someone you know there is robs sometimes it's like what happened to job god took it away you know and then but god then doubled it too and that's where the contrast is that we are not called to live by the things that we see we are called to live by the things we don't see we are called to live by faith and and in when we live by faith then god can bless us in any way he desires you know any way he desires sometimes the blessing is material sometimes the blessing is not material sometimes the blessing is in financially way sometimes in any other way god will take care of your health he will not allow the person to fall sick sometimes he takes care of all the details all the bills i mean anything can happen 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 29 to 31 we think about it you know in philippians chapter 4 verse 5 colossians 3 1 to 4 set your mind on things above set your mind on things above this is what we are called to do this is what we are that we are called to live by faith and the way god wants to work in our lives you know and it, this is this is an amazing that cease from your consideration of it like don't get so over occupied with it that you keep god out of the picture when you set your eyes on it it is gone wealth makes itself wings you know it goes it can go away you know was 6 7 8 8 do not eat the bread of a selfish man or desire his delicacies for as he thinks within himself so he is he he says to you eat and drink but his heart is not with you you will vomit up the morsel you have eaten and waste your complement tough one <laughs> what's he saying do not eat food of a miser of a stingy person he may say that eat but his heart is not with you it's a very interesting story in luke chapter 11 jesus goes to the house of the pharisee and as he goes and sits to eat it says in the next verse it says that the pharisee is thinking why is he not done ceremonial washing and he doesn't say it he just thinks and jesus says you pharisees you are on the outside like a cup on a platter which is white but inside you're filled with wickedness and rottenness can you imagine going to someone's house and he's invited you but in the mind he's thinking why is he not done this that is exactly what they are saying that there is an invitation you know but what is he saying eat and drink but his heart is not with you there was a different reason why christ was god and christ straight away addresses the issue why you are thinking of ceremonial washing but here i am sitting in front of you and you do not want me you know you do not want me <clears throat> solomon's thought behind this proverb that god is saying is this that if a stingy person someone whose heart is not right offers you a meal or anything you know disguised as a friendship act of friendship like they are calling you home or you know gifting you something to offer you a friendship but that is not their real motive their motive is something else they want something from you it's a selfish deed why they are doing it it is better to avoid it than to go that's the whole idea because if you know don't judge the person by what they are saying but what's in their heart is basically what solomon is saying is that they can say nice words but in their heart the attitude is completely opposite the pharisee says come jesus come to eat at my home but when he comes in he is observing him and saying oh he is not following the law and jesus would say to him you are a cup on a on a platter white on the outside but inside you are filled with rottenness you know 
and this is this is the hap this is this is what the warning is basically like be careful we don't judge just because of the words we don't think what they are saying and you know we we fall for it and say oh they are speaking nice words so what's in the heart that's the real issue you know however there is a great contrast when it comes to the gospel the invitation is what everyone come come sit at the table you know the feast is for everyone there is nothing that is untoward or nothing that is wrong in that invitation when jesus said go into the highways and byways and call people in there was no ulterior motive and this is the gospel invitation the gospel invitation to come into the kingdom to to be is because the ruler is gracious christ is gracious you know such an invitation can should never be rejected think about it the only qualification to enter into the kingdom of god in that sense is our hunger i think about it sometimes when i think about the life of mephibosheth second samuel chapter 9 was 13 it says that's the last verse of chapter 9 it says and mephibosheth sat at the king's table every day like just think of the picture that there is david on the head of the table all his commanders these are men of valor these are men who are you know who are well known and feared they are brave they have done these huge acts you know and there is one person sitting who has got no reputation he's actually the enemy's grandson but he is jonathan's son and david remembers the promise and says mephibosheth sits at my table how many boy wins how many battles has mephibosheth fought it zero how many enemies has he defeated what's he done nothing in fact he's from saul's household he's the enemy and he's sitting right at david's table this is the love of christ that we are all invited to be at the table to be with christ every day you know like what did we do to deserve this nothing but we are at that feasting table of christ every day every morning every day there is a lavish table laid out for us that we can feast on with christ you know and with christ you know there is no selfishness you know there is there is in a sense like he is not thinking to himself his heart is with us his heart is with us he is always there for us every time we come to this table our appetite increases we want more of god we want more of god we want more of god you know and that's amazing thing to understand was nine do not speak in the hearing of a fool for he will despise the wisdom of your words uh, uh remember matthew chapter 7 verse 6 jesus would say do not cast your pearls before the swine that is exactly what this verse is saying do not speak in the hearing of the fool for he will despise the wisdom of your words you know <clears throat> sometimes we share with people and we talk to people and we share with them the wisdom of god but it makes no inroads sometimes we share the gospel and people are just not interested now it is not saying that we share the gospel with someone and they reject it and we say i am not going to cast my pearls before the swine that's not the application the application here is make every effort make every effort to share the gospel make every effort to win a soul that's the key that's important but there comes a time you know and this is ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 7 there comes a time when you are speaking to someone advising someone encouraging someone and they don't receive it then there is a time to speak and there is a time to be silent ecclesiastes 3 verse 7 says this there is a time to be silent there are sometimes you are giving the wisdom of god you are under- making people understand there is counseling going on but the people don't want it they are like refusing it and they are behaving in a sense like you know they are despising the wisdom the lord is saying okay there is a time to be quiet think about this in in luke 23 verse 9 jesus is before herod and herod is asking him questions does jesus speak he says he stood quietly there he didn't say a word he could have he did not you know why Proverbs one seven. He knew what was going to happen. They were going to laugh. They were going to mock. They were going to use his words against him and trap him again. So he just chose to be quiet. 
that's a great understanding that sometimes our silence will speak louder than words sometimes when we are quiet it it is more it's louder than many words that we will speak and when we are advising someone loving someone do it with prayer you know do it with prayer because sometimes <clears throat> people want to listen but they are not receiving it we did the message yesterday on hearing and recognizing the voice of god and the key was always this are people listening are they taking it in you know because anyone can hear but it takes time to listen it takes an effort to listen we need to be listeners of the word of god and the same thing applies in life too that do not speak in the hearing of a fool that sometimes it's just not welcome okay there's a time to be quiet when it comes to a soul you know keep speaking and maybe some day there will be an opening and sometimes god may say okay no just stop and god would use someone else or after a period of time you get the opportunity again be wise use prayer as a weapon to understand when to say and when not to say and also you know the holy spirit will give you direction when to stop sometimes we need to stop and god will give us the timings for that you know verse 10 and 11 do not move the ancient boundaries or go into the fields of the fatherless for their redeemer is strong and he will plead their case against you do not move the ancient boundaries do not of the fatherless their defender is strong that speaking about god you know sometimes <coughs> people uh, are fearful in approaching the rich but very easily they persecute the poor or the weak when they consider that this proverb is saying don't think the weak are weak because their defender is god the strong may have wealth influence as they are strong points which is can go like this but the weak have god as their defender you know in leviticus 25 is the principle of the kinsman redeemer the nearest relative will redeem you our kinsman redeemer is jesus christ you know if we are on our own alone and no one near us no one there to help us our kinsman redeemer in heaven helps us he stands with us you know and the fields of the fatherless they are protected by god areas in our life times in our life where we feel that there is no one to help us and we are on our own you are protected by god fatherless but yet your defender is god god becomes our defender and then who can stand against us you know who can stand against us god you know if if when we are walking with god and as a believer when we are living in this world we are persecuted sometimes for our faith and our belief god is our defender the vengeance will belong he knows how to take care of us and how to do that sometimes we don't see what god is doing and the you know the whole vengeance part and you're like oh god you did not do anything you have no clue what god is doing we have absolutely no clue he is a defender of the fatherless he knows how to handle our lives you know verse 12 apply your heart to discipline and your ears to the words of knowledge wow apply your heart to instruction and your words to the knowledge what does that mean <laughs> study the book of proverbs that's what it is <laughs> okay you know this only goes to show that sometimes how people can be careless of divine instruction god speaks and his voice is over the waters he says the bible says the voice is clear the voice is in a sense it, uh, it brings in harmony it brings in peace the voice of god is above many waters it means it's over confusion and we need to be disciplined you know apply our heart to discipline which means take effort do do those things like bring discipline into your life when it comes to hearing the word of god bring discipline into your life when it comes to paying attention to the words of god that this discipline is needed you know? this discipline uh, someone's phone is on can you put your microphone on yeah okay so we need to bring discipline 
we need to bring and apply discipline how will how will i grow in instruction how will i grow in the word of god by paying attention you know gladly sitting at the feet of god this is the idea when we see the life of mary in the new testament that is how the growth came always at the feet of christ why receiving the words there is discipline you know there is discipline there the ears were ready to hear the words of knowledge there is a reception that is going on you know sitting at the feet and where is the source of instruction the scriptures now think look at the link here between the heart and the ear apply your heart to discipline and then it says your ears to words of knowledge there is a link there you know there is a link there that this is the heart can be open to advice of people and sometimes close to christ and his teaching that's sad that we can listen to opinions of people but we are not ready to hear the words of christ why because of unbelief sometimes it is because of indifference or sometimes just pleasure you know we prefer to hear the people then we prefer to hear god when the heart is not disciplined when it is not ready to receive then the ear will become careless if there is no expectation in the heart we talked about this in the message yesterday and then later on in the rap session both are up on youtube if you want you can watch it we talked about it if there is no desire then the ear won't hear if there is no preparation if there is no expectation in the heart then we will not hear even when god is speaking why because the heart is not prepared there is the connection is weak and if the heart is not prepared then the ear gets careless and that's the whole idea behind this you know this <clears throat> when the heart is prepared then sometimes a quiet one line prayer can make more difference than a 15 minute message one words can make more difference in like think like this there are times where for month i have not heard anything from god that because my heart is not prepared i am too busy i am too occupied i am uh, you know too many details in life uh, trying to impress everyone trying to live a good life all those things but i'm not hearing from god and sometimes one line from god one can change all of that we can just change all of that can change our lives because the word of god the voice of god is gracious the voice of god is loving people have a misconception about the nature and character of god and they think god is a tough task master god is legalistic god is strong god is angry and none of that is true the voice of god the instruction of god is never condemning the instruction of god is never like casual you know it's not it's not accusatory it is gracious it is an encouragement it is divine and in psalm 119 verse 72 and 127 it talks about it the value of the word the value of instruction you know as a side at as a side uh, maybe from today to next monday read psalm 119 just just not just study it but just read it you know just read it just go through many verses or oh, divide those number of verses into seven days and read them just read them it is it's amazing the history behind psalm 119 you know psalm 119 you know that's is written in eight word eight 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 verses blocks of eight verses you know history tells us that it was written by ezra and when when they were being transported they were being taken away to babylon and there were atrocities happening on the way you know molestation rapes murders and in the midst of all this the writer is actually writing down some 119 the heart was prepared when ezra comes back and with nehemiah and they have to rebuild the city nehemiah does the work ezra preaches the word and that's when people are encouraged when their heart was prepared they were hearing the word they could do something that was not happening in 52 days 
and when they were careless in their heart and not hearing they went into captivity this can happen to the believer you know if the heart is not ready if the heart is does not have an expectation as a desire to hear the word then we become our own slaves somebody else makes us their slave spiritually speaking be very careful be very careful <clears throat> verse 13 and 14 do not hold back discipline from the child although you beat him with a rod he will not die this does not give us a, a green signal to hit them every time it's just the idea behind it is don't withhold discipline like oh they'll change oh they'll change and never discipline that's the idea behind it. verse 14 you shall beat him with the rod and deliver his soul from sheol okay now again punish him or her with the rod it does not mean you know beat beat them so much that beat them black and blue it means a punishment the idea is being is is to recognize spiritual standards spiritual standards okay uh, do children need correcting of course they do you know if but if there is no discipline then there is a problem so how do you discipline wisely you are firm but also lovingly and when you do it you persevere in it you know you don't say okay i've taught them once disciplined them once now they will never do it again so never it no it has to be done wisely it has to be done lovingly and it has to be done firmly if we say no it means should mean no if it does not mean no there will be a problem okay why why does that happen because sometimes we are not disciplined we are not trained that's why we don't find them to be trained we turned out to be okay they'll also turn out to be okay doesn't work that way okay oh you know the, you know let them be as they are on sundays they go to sunday school sunday school will figure them out no no <laughs> we'll put the tv on and they will watch all kinds of godly programs at the tv the godly program will help no you know this is god speaking do you think god does that with us yeah when god wants to discipline us and god wants to have have things in our life he is loving with us he does those things with us you know why does he do it to save us you know to save us to keep us out of trouble basically we cannot trust our natural judgments and our natural thinking because that will never bring uh, <laughs> it never glorifies god never magnifies god never moves towards god so that's what it is we want to think about it you know this is what god wants in our life you know <clears throat> do it wisely we we see the breaking of the rule and the society crumbling because of this we know in the west what are the rules going on there if the child says if you discipline me i'll call the cops and you will go to jail <clears throat> like society is now saying this is how it should be this is human wisdom like do not discipline the child and the child is given rights to call the cops if the parents want to discipline so whose child is it does it belong to the government or does it belong to the parents but the parents do not have rights how can that be you know don't don't do that to them how can that be the bible is clear you will deliver his soul from sheol you know you will deliver the soul we see this there's so many movements happening across europe and also in america and these things are happening and what are they finding out that those people involved in these movements behind the scenes whatever it is called black lives movement or whatever those movements are what is the real issue no fathers the generation does not know who their father is so there is no discipline they don't know who their father is and so what's happening is everything is right in our eyes we do as we please and no one can tell us what to do and what not to do you will save them from shame okay <clears throat> verse 15 and 16 my son if your heart is wise my own heart will also be glad and my inmost being will rejoice when your lips speak what is right my son if your heart is wise <clears throat> now solomon is turning away from the parents and now addressing the children maybe their own children what if the family is not following god the children you follow god okay that's what the idea is like 
we know if your heart is wise my own heart will also be glad my inmost being will rejoice when you speak when your lips speak what is right like you also as you are growing god is telling us you also grow oh no one is there to teach me you get get on your knees and learn from god god will bring you to a place where he will teach you god will send you to an assembly where the word is taught you know no i have been trying and nothing happens well go on your knees ask god i want to know you god is not going to make it difficult for you he'll make it easier for you he'll send you to the place where people love the word where people seek the word where people teach the word if you are satisfied with stale food that's your problem but if you desire god and you want manna every day then god will give it to you is there god is not going to deny any child and say listen you know i can't help you all the churches are full right now and there is no church there which where i can send you which teaches the word sorry <laughs> he's there it's it's our desire but no one around me is following god then you follow god there is no one around me to help me then god is there to help you i i want to i want to but you no know, there is no buts there are people on this group who have signed up for classes who are not even in this country right now and they are from another place where you know there is not a lot of access to bible college they have some access but they want to do bible college what are they doing they are getting on zoom right now and they are some of them are right here in the class they are getting on zoom right now and they are hundreds of miles away and there is a time difference there but they are on this class right now why because they want to learn the word of god they want to grow in apologetics they want to do those things why there is a desire my son you know if your heart is wise my own heart is also with you glad god helps it god brings those things together god bring manages those things together and brings it in the spirit whether you are young whether you are old whether you are a new christian whether you are you are been a christian for a long time makes no difference you desire god's word god will you send you to a place or bring someone to you to teach you the word he will not let that desire in your heart go wrong he will always help and bless and encourage you okay so we'll stop here at verse 16 next monday we'll go from 17 to 35 and also if you can read some 119 in this week and it will be good for us okay so now we will open it up for questions comments or if and in those who are on youtube if you are watching if there is a question comment type it on the live chat okay type it on the live chat and we will try and give an answer right here okay so we have some time we have about 10 15 minutes uh please go ahead and ask any questions any clarifications and then we can take this further hello pastor this is anant here hi anant uh, hello pastor uh, actually uh, you to- you gave some references about the lust of flesh can you give the reference pastor I yes noted down it is first john chapter 2 verse 16 first uh, john chapter 2 chapter 2 verse 16 and genesis chapter 3 verse 6 okay first john chapter 2 16 16 yes and genesis chapter 3 was 6 okay pastor thank you you're welcome hello right anyone else <clears throat> feel free to share think uh pastor this is anant here once again yes sir 
so the book of proverbs is written by king solomon right yes Pastor? yes uh, completely by king solomon or other people also sorry uh, was so king solomon the only person who wrote this book or there were uh, it says that many many authors in that sense solomon wrote over 3000 but a few are mentioned like for example when you look at proverbs chapter 30 it says the words of agur in chapter 31 it says the words of lemuel so there are other people who have written and this is mentioned there so there are other authors also and uh, <clears throat> you can look at that okay okay uh, i think someone asked a question about sheol okay yeah so what happens okay when we talk about this word sheol it's the old testament reference Oh, Rishikesh is there. Okay, so Rishikesh, the question that <clears throat> there are references that are mentioned and uh, saved people, people in the Old Testament who would know Jesus Christ. Okay, they they believed in Christ that He was going to come. When they would die, they would go to a place under the earth called uh, paradise, and those not, they would go into the name in a place called. Uh, Hades. So, generally, the word Sheol is used for a place which is under the earth. You know, person does not know God. So, the idea is that if the discipline does not happen, if the what what the spiritual discipline is, they do not get to know God, then they will end up in the wrong place and they will be go against God and they may end up in hell. So, the idea behind that is the reason why we do it is so that people. spiritually disciplined so that they would get to know god and god when they get along with god then god will help them in their life rishikesh thank you for joining class you and your brother it's great to have both of you in the class how old are you rishikesh you and your brother Rishikesh, yeah. So they are thirteen years old and fourteen years old. Both brothers are there. They come for the Hindi service and they are in Virar, and they are there in the class today. It's amazing. Thank you, <clears throat> thank you for coming and being a part of this class. You are a great example. It's good to have you. Right. Anyone else? Okay. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We continue to bless our classes and those who are attending. <clears throat> uh, bless this time tonight. Give us understanding, wisdom. Continue to bless the semester ahead. Pray for all the classes that will happen during this week, and all for the students who are signing up. And as <clears throat> we go forward, we just continue to ask you to help us and guide us in Jesus' name. Amen. So the class on Friday <clears throat> will be in person. It will be at the church office. Those who would like to join in, please come to the class there and enjoy the class live. Um, but the class also will be telecast on, I think, Zoom and YouTube. We'll we'll keep you updated with that. But those who are in the area, please feel free to come in and join, and it will be a great encouragement. So I think Pastor Peter teaches at six thirty to seven twenty-five or so, and then Joshua will teach from seven thirty onwards to eight thirty. It's going to be great classes, great lives, and New Testament survey will be more than just a survey. Okay, it's going to be taught in depth, major chapters of uh, each book, and so you will have a great time, right? So. So just keep. If you haven't signed up, anyone hasn't signed up. You're listening to this. Please continue and sign up and send your names in, and then we keep you updated. Okay. So, God bless you. Bye. Good night. <clears throat>